Houston, we have a problem. Self-proclaimed as the freakiest man in R&B, C-Town Townsend was not always adored by the public. Born C-Town <laughs> Cornelius Jones to loving, wholesome, devoted religious parents, he often found... Why does C-Town keep using Bobby Brown? You're not Bobby, bro. Stop using Bobby Brown. He found himself to be outcast in many social circles. Although his parents raised him to be a studious, hardworking gentleman, Townsend soon discovered avenues to unleash the freaky beast within his heart. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this talking? Close family members of the artist can recall the first incident of what would now be known as freak mania. Celebrating his ninth birthday at a local Chuck E. Cheese, young C-Town took it upon himself to disrupt the beloved, much make-believe band performance and stole the show with a re-edition of Teddy Pendergrass Freak Mania? The lights. <laughs> Given the demographics of the establishment, <laughs> he was immediately... Nah, I go Freak Mania. Freak Mania got he it. ...from the premises Bro. along with a five-year ban. This did not discourage the young boy. This was only the beginning. In his attempt to promote the freaky R&B agenda, the blooming artist spent the next 10 years bringing exposure to what was once lost in mainstream music. This act of bravery has resulted in Get numerous Bobby the out of here. including, but certainly not limited to, churches, strip clubs, school talent shows, and a local Starbucks. At the age of 19, C-Town had finally found what he thought would be his big break into the industry. Given an invitation to sing the national anthem before a televised Seattle Storm WNBA game, this was his time to shine. Yeah, my nigga gotta go to the Seattle Storm WNBA. Why you wasn't performing with the Supersonics? To perform for the ladies. Dressed in a purple bedazzled suit, jacket, and pants with the Stacey Adams to match, the artist began to captivate the audience with his silky vocals. Then, all hell broke loose. As a surprise to the unknown... I ain't gonna lie, W narration. You in your bag, W narration. C-Town incorporated a gentle strip tease towards the end of the performance, which in a WNBA a game? Evening, bedazzled mankini. But... During the act, the daring artist was quickly taken away by security and was later charged <laughs> with indecent exposure. W police, W police, Given W the police. Previous offenses w throughout police. The, years, the city of Seattle formally ejected w police. with a 20 year ban. <laughs> w police! With nowhere else to go, the freaky man traveled down to the city of Los Angeles. Um, freaky tape. The freaky tape. That's my baby. That is my baby. I can't even deny about how great that album is. Um,. That was my first album. Uh, yeah, you're right. That was my first album after Next Generation. The issue was the issue was for um yeah. People don't know about that. After I left after I left uh the next generation, um <laughs> the five months during like before actually making that album, for five months, I didn't know what the hell to do. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what I was yeah. Got too much time. I didn't know what what it was great, you know, great for because it was like everyone everyone was going going in, everyone was doing their thing and and uh what's it called? Like the next generation had an album in what I think going I think uh while I was making the freaky tape. Mm -hmm. Uh and they sold really well. And what pissed me off, and I was pissed off, bro. And I ain't gonna lie, I was a little jealous. I was pissed off because, you know, with I felt like they were clicking without me. And it was hard because now 
as a as a person. Yo, the this freaky young, tape was never finished. To the solo solo action. Now I have to prove myself why I did what I had to do. And I remember I went up to um the big guy, uh Teddy Riley, and I said, Hey man, we can do something. I know we can, because I know my talents and I know how we go. And he was like, All right. The thing is with with you though, what are you trying to do? He was like, and he told, and I told him, straight up, I want to be raw, I want to be pro- uh, provocative, but I also want to be the smooth talker that I am. And he was like, okay, bet, we're gonna make that happen. With the public demand for new music, C-Town began to record his debut album entitled "Don't Be Freaky" at FOT Records, and was released during the following summer season. He started tapping his fingers. <laughs> He started tapping his fingers on a table and and we're trying to figure it and he was and he was just talking while doing it and i said whoa, whoa, whoa can we stop that real quick um he just kept tapping and it was don't like, be whoa, freaky whoa, what's up no i was like no keep tap, keep tapping real quick i instantly i instantly just had a i had a melody in my head just instantly and i said yes we need this we gotta we gotta do something with this one we gotta do I don't know how to beat gonna This work. proved to be a massive hit, selling nearly 400,000 records within the first two weeks of release. And with the loving feedback from both supporters, news outlets, and other artists, this helped catapult Sea Town into superstardom. Over the next year, the singer saw himself performing on platforms such as The Apollo Show, Saturday Night Live, Arsenio Hall Show, <laughs> In Living Color, and even The Oprah Show. This nigga is not Bobby Brown, though. Get Bobby out of here. This nigga hasn't released one real song. It's time to get wild now, bro. Fuck happened? That's a that's a woman right there. If you ask me, you know, just meeting her, (laughs) meeting her. Like, is that Sonny? Like two, three months. Um, in an after party after an award show, um, she came up to me. She said she congratulated me after the performance. Um, and I was like, man, you know, I appreciate it. And we got to talking, you know. These niggas got a fucking love story here. So, which is funny. Like, I kind of like got out of focus and then... But then I'm like, damn, that nigga got some big ass feet. And I went back and started, you know, going back into my routine. I didn't I didn't realize I didn't think of it until I didn't think of it, but now it's I I love her. I'm trying to think, like, damn. Yeah, the community went crazy. Whole time Guapo continues to be the head of the table. Don't you ever disrespect me like that. Guapo ain't the head of a motherfucking thing. Now I had enough of this shit. Oh. That's my one and only. That's my heart. I can't think anything about the, you know what I'm saying? I can't think I wouldn't spend my, you know, I don't want to say too early, but I can't imagine not spending the rest of my life with her, you know? That's dumb big ass feet. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's how I met him. They just talked backstage and he was actually nice i thought he's gonna be more arrogant he's not sonny blue is really in a, a magnificent woman and a, and a magnificent talent has helped me especially in my music career but you know what i'm saying as a person especially she's just she's just that that woman Chat, what's dropping first one night while partying at Lapel, the album was or Dr. Ju- or Dr. Dre's next album. New York native talent Sonny Blue before her performance. King Guap acknowledged Guap. I don't give a fuck about no Guapo. Now he want to ignore Tay. Yup, I don't see none of that. Look at him with his head down. <laughs> what the fuck? I ain't seen none of that. As one of the it girls of the 90s, Blue's captivating <laughs> was among the lights of Anita Baker. Sea Town album or the new Rihanna album? Phyllis Hyman. <laughs> and Stephanie Mills. 
As Blue began to serenade the crowd with a cover of Sweet Love, Seatown felt his heart grow strong with admiration and felt that the lovely Sonny was indeed the one. The couple soon began to date privately and with a paparazzi growing in anticipation and wondering who was Miss Blue's secret man. The freaky man of R&B and his performances was finally getting the exposure and love that he desired back in Seattle. Oh yeah, yeah, that 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 one's a that one's a classic one right there. I, I can't even <laughs> deny about that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to do it. You're missing. I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? I had to prove my affection to this woman. You know what I'm saying? Um, just about to go on tour. Uh, your dance routine's down back. Um, what else? Who cares yeah, about Dr. Drake? Damn, nigga. Dancer. It was just an example, everybody asshole. Tell me, you know, everybody tried to tell me, oh, man. Yeah, you just, you, man, you just sick right now. You just infatuated with her. Yeah, I saw, man. You're not trying to be with her for real. And I was like, all right, bet. All right, you talking to SC's. I got an album coming next week. You don't rap. I am. All right, I'm going to prove that I, re- I really, I really. Nobody give a fuck about Dr. Dr. Drake. Do. Oh, you my know, God. I had to Damn. Do it's an example. I have no names, but you know he caught my eye. Singing her, singing to her. Why like Messi that. not VIP? I actually, I honestly, I'm gonna be honest. Messi wasn't you VIP at one point in time? Why is Messi not VIP? I thought I gave your Messi like the editor role. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you too. I don't really. I don't have the answer to that. I feel like he was VIP before. You took it and gave him the editor badge? Oh, yeah. I, I, I gave him my editor badge because, yo, Meshi designed, Meshi designed my fucking, my avatar. He designed my banner, and he designed a lot of my emotes. So I gave him the editor role. I'll be up here, my nigga, man. Yo, Meshi, I think it might be time for a new profile pic, man. You got some fire, man? Right to me. But the, the one we got is a classic, though. But it might be right. time for a new one. I would do that, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, as a smooth guy like me, as a person like me, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> it would, you would say, you would think it would be hard for me to be um, hard in uh, committed relationships or just having that. I don't have issues around here. I love that woman. And I proved that I love that woman. That's what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted to do. One of the biggest highlights of that year was performing at the American Music Awards in which the romantic singer brought his glamorous lady, Sonny Blue, onto the stage and sung to her, Teddy Pendergrass, You're My Latest, My Greatest Inspiration. W Love Later Story. Later that C-Town was also awarded New Artist of the Year. <laughs> Fame and fortune began to hit the freakiest man at an alarming rate, but with money and power comes temptation and chaos. He got all his success! With the new Where's the songs? Majority of women supporters... This put a strain on the personal relationship between him and Sonny Blue. Bobby right Town, now, we, get the fuck great. out of here. I'm we're calling it up Bobby Town that's, ever that's, again, nigga. That's bad. I think we're... I think we're... Fuck out of here. We needed to do, you know? Um, no, it's very... Seeing that, that mode. So and perform together. You don't have a nice. mode. Just... No. I ain't gonna get into it like that. But it was very nice to perform. And you know, gain more fans like that. We are. I'm calling yeah, you right are, now. We love each other, bro. I'm watching you the documentary. You can call me after the documentary. Soon, um, we're looking for some, but as of right now, we're doing great. Imposter. And we love it. I mean, we can we can work that out with the foot issue. We got a big ass bunion. We gotta go to, you know, get him a little mani pedi. I'm just glad that. So I thought y'all niggas um, here with nasty I'm ass just feet. Glad that the whole issues between us during those uh, during that year is really spilled over, and now everybody's witnessing like me, you, you crazy. Know, the positive action, the positive things, the positivities that we're that we're bringing in for each other. Besides them having daggers, like I mean daggers, like dagger toes. <laughs> like goddamn, that nigga can cut somebody. That's crazy. But um, let's talk about Grigo. So I say it's it's you know cordial. Cool. That's about it. No, I ain't make no moves. <coughs> don't need to, maybe. And I love that for for me and my uh my girl. 
I want that. I want her real. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Take I it out right now. For what? I want our relationship to look. Dude, empowered. Dennis, why you a hoe? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing like ours. You know what I'm saying? They right next to that water, so they got a lot of seafood, crab legs, lobster. Uh -huh. And Starbucks is nice. Oh, no, I think he's a steak. Hey, dude. Sonny trying to get out the hood. Something with meat. I don't know about that wishing, but... Juicy T, who the fuck is that, man? We the next power couple, if that makes sense. That's, that's how I look at it. And C-Town, so like, he's he he talking this from jail. Boy, Mr. Miles Slocum, and we are back today to talk about C-Town's new album. He says it's more funkier than freaky. Look at Bobby Brown. <laughs> Bobby Brown a nasty nigga. I'm Reaching not... his sophomore album simply entitled Freaky, C-Town brought to life more hits such as Freaking Around and Only Down. Yeah, I wanted my 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 goal. The fuck? For always, if I'm in an album, I always want to try something new. You know what I'm saying? Bro. But always keep it in the realm of who I am. And so... I did what I did. I, I I wanted to be in a more funkier mood. I wanted to be in a more um, dancing type of mood. More of a, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you when you hear my beat, you can't help but get up and, and wiggle yourself. Or, you know what I'm saying? Do what you need to do. You know, dance around. That's what that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. But it always kept it in the realm of who I, who I am. Always kept their what a song with, what I can do <laughs> with that beat. I feel like Bro. it was versatility. He's Vers spitting. That nigga not spitting about shit. <laughs> hey, that nigga sick. Again with the Bro, this the nigga Bobby Brown is a goddamn freak. Riley, the freakiest man in R&B proved to the world that the essence of freak mania couldn't be contained in a single album. This album also peaked at the number one spot on Billboard's Hot 100 for seven weeks and on America's top R&B charts for nine weeks straight. Once again, the hit maker controlled the nightclub scene night after night. You <laughs> said where? See, when they got the streets on fire, nigga. I think going back to uh, it's a nasty camera angle. You know, throughout that. That's a nasty decade, fit. You know, things change, and so I said, okay, it's my work. I, I do had a little bit of a, a battle <laughs> of it because I, I wanted to keep the little funk into it. But, you know, it was hard because the more songs you listen to and the more you, you get the feeling of what's what's hype, what's hype into it. Get them fake so names out of here. Hard, I but, see you spamming you know, them. I kept, into, I kept in tune of it, but I wanted the to The freakiest man of R&B. Um, Fuck out of here. More, more into me, too. I always want every album that I make is me. Every that I, album that I make, <laughs> I did it because... That's who I am. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see that. So me being laid back into it, it was more of a it was more uh it was more of like my other side too. There's different sides of seasons, uh for season to really be who he is. You know what I'm saying? I can sing, I can rap, you know what I'm saying? I can keep a flow on, but at the same time I can keep a ballad. I can keep a melody up. I can keep um Put in my heart, like B fly album coming soon, nigga. From this documentary, I didn't heard you drop three albums. You was number, you was on the, you was on the chart for seven weeks. What you mean coming soon? It's a love poem. You know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted to do on that album, and I feel like I did a good job. Mhm. Mm oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. I, I think, I think going back to uh, legal issues. All right, you know, my throughout nigga. That, throughout that decade, <laughs> All right, my nigga. Know, things change. And so I said, okay. I, oh, man. It was like, <laughs> you know, after the after the tape, in between in between um, my second album, I really. Yo. I it was one. Yo, like, just I'm money. Who, Appreciate you for big 10 months, gang. Tupac really helped me. Uh, Nigga, did you just say Tupac? I really, I think it was one. I forgot who. I think it was Tupac. Tupac really helped me. 
uh, looked into the, to the screen and I remember one day, I think it was during Juice. I remember it was during Juice and, uh, and he was doing his thing and I was like, man, you really did well in that movie. He was like, man. Nigga, you said you talked to Tupac, nigga? Nah, this nigga got a problem. And y'all say I'm crazy. I'm telling you, man, move, you know, <laughs> putting yourself in the motion picture and doing all that. Nah, really nigga. Good. Nah, you know nigga. You, you can do a lot nah, of good things. Nigga. Nah, nigga. And it, it displays your nah. talent. I told myself, man, I think I might have too. Let's just come saying? together. If, Amazing. Uh, people don't Fuck out of here. They know, like, I was supposed to be. I was there. Uh, Yo, 96, uh, you got problems too, to nigga. On the movie. Black Legends. Um, what was the movie? It was with the all women. It was with all women. I was, I was supposed to be. Yeah, that was the movie. I was supposed to be in that in that movie, it but was, uh, sister act. Uh, I I I didn't I didn't have enough time to really get there, and um, but I'm glad I'm glad that I did have some TV appearances. Where you know I got I had the TV appearances with a you know, really single. I had TV appearances with um. Uh, with Frog Files, you know, the old Frog Files. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad that I... I okay, I listened, okay, Big Frog you know, Files, Big Frog that, Files, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad I was in some... I, I'm glad, hey, I, one of my favorite appearances was, you know, the Saturday Night Live, you know what I'm saying? That was, a, that's a quality one right there, you know? So I, I did a little dip and dabble on it, but my favorite, my favorite was, my favorite was uh being in that, in that movie with Mark, with Martin. That was, that, that that's the cold one right there. You know what I'm saying? I... I wanted to get into more. I wanted to get into more, but you know, my, my passion is music, and that's how that's always <laughs> I wanted to be in it. But like acting, acting, I'm not gonna lie, I, I had I had some great fun into it. I had some great fun on Yo, it. Yo, this know? nigga got a whole life. <laughs> yeah, it's not um, his life. Throughout the 2000s, you know, uh, I grew. Up, you know what I'm saying? Going older, became more of a. Uh... Oh, wait a minute, nigga, did you just run a giveaway for 20 points? What's this giveaway? Nah, nah, you play on my niggas at this point. <laughs> you ran a giveaway for six points, knowing that niggas was just gonna join, and you told me some niggas hungry for six points. You really a hoe. You know what you did? You threw chains around niggas that's hungry and laughed at them fighting over a quarter. You really a hoe. Yeah, that's some hoe that's ass shit. My, like, <laughs> the broke I had. That's some hoe yeah. ass shit. Yeah. You know, I had the troubles with the law. I had the the troubles with um with the whole situation with some women, but <laughs> um I always felt like it was a learning lesson for me that I couldn't do the things that I was, you know, being thirty two, right? I can't do the things that I was doing at, at thirty two when I was twenty two. I just couldn't do it. It just would have been you know what I'm saying, it wouldn't make sense. So you know, I was just growing throughout. I was just growing throughout trying Nigga, to- Nigga, how old are you? A, 32. In a, in a calming mood. I had to be calm. I had to lay back on music a little bit so I could turn my, so I could learn my stuff more. I could teach myself more. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why, that's why I, I, that's why I dropped the last album during the 2000s because to me, that was my final, that was my final way of saying- He ages backwards. I'm gonna be good. Right, while calming down. <laughs> Don't ask I'm a freak their I'm age. Be good while <laughs> you know I'm what? Leave what me alone. I'ma give uh what you want. Yeah. I had a lot of you know what I'm saying, the last album to me I didn't expect it to be uh well in my opinion because again the whole trouble. Don't the ask wild, a freak their age you know, some nasty the whole shit. Mama drama type of things, but I kept we kept it afloat. The you know freakiest man is ageless. A little bit and I, and I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the fans that I have to, you know, keep it by my side. But I really love that for my, uh, <laughs> for the, throughout that 2000, you know, and uh, I was good on it. I was glad that they were gonna re, you know, pre uh, re release that that freaky tape because you know that that tape was, like I said, that, that tape's my baby. You know what I'm saying? That tape is my baby, and I just. And I just want other people, like the younger generation, to know, like, who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? That's what Yo, Kev! Appreciate you for the big 12 months, gang. I'm not, I'm not like these other cats. You know, I'm not like these other people. You know what I'm saying? I'm different. There's no one that could be like me. 
you know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted to do. But yeah, my, my last album, I'm, my last album, you know, I was good on that. I think I thought being in that on that album alone was pretty good, and I I, I felt good. I felt good Re- releasing that one and telling myself, okay, you did what you had to do. Now I feel like you you're good. You're good. You know, and you trying to. You trying to get me caught this up? This nigga just <laughs> chatting. <laughs> like that women, nigga just that chatting. Really, you know, <laughs> that, that caught that caught me up. That nigga, uh, that nigga made a whole documentary you know, of chatting. A great one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that nigga's sick, bro. This shit long. This shit almost over. I will say. I will. I was gonna say. Wait, what? You know. I will say, I will say, the Braxton sisters. What you know about what them? I'm I, I, I quite fun. We had a little bit, a little bit of chemistry. Yo, W motherfucking community, man. W community, man. W community. T Town, call me. Matter of fact, motherfucker, I'm gonna call you. Chat, spam them in the chat for them, bro. I really appreciate that, bro. That's, that's hard. Yo, hurry up, Joe C Town. Because I it's some, it's some shit we gotta talk about, man. Big man, big man. What the guy with ya? C Town. Yeah. I just got a question for you, bro. What good? You, you Hello? Sc- wait, wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I want the hook. I want the hook on there. Yes, yes. Man, call play for that shit. God damn. I'm on the phone with a good guy, man. How you doing, man? Hey, Trey. <laughs> hey. Nigga, was you just talking to yourself in that room? Nah, I'm talking to my... Bro, calm down, my nigga. Come on, bro. What's wrong with you? I'm talking to one of the producers that's for the album, bro. Come on, man. Man, you know how I am. I'm a busy man, man. Come on. How you doing, man? See town. Yo. I just watched a document that was 24 minutes and 7 seconds of you hey, saying hey, you got hey, all these albums and uh-huh. I've yet to hear a single song, C-Town. Hey, what, what, the, what the... Hey, man. What, what did my what? manager slash producer say? Legal issues, man. You know how hard it is. You know the MCA records? They be on some bullshit, bro. I can't do nothing about that. So tell me about you this conversation say? that you had with Tupac. Oh, um, man. See, this was this was during this was during he was a, on the set of Juice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted I wanted to check the set real quick because uh one of my you know what I'm saying one of my honeys was part of the part of the background. So I was like, All right, I'm gonna go there for a little bit, try to surprise her. Then you know yes, I saw yes. Tupac. I saw Tupac and um I forgot his first name. Oh, it's like some Kane or something like that, right? I was like, damn. Hey man, I, I you know what I'm saying? I see them acting and shit, and Tupac doing this shit. It was during that uh scene where he was in the living room with all three of them. And he just started screaming. He was like, man, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? He tried to put the emotions on. I was like, damn. So, this nigga putting it work. I got to get into this. So you're telling me you and Tupac actually like you was like directly in his face. Directly in his yeah. face. And like you had an in-person conversation with him. Why Why are you acting like you don't yes, believe me? I do remember. 96. I think you might be sick too. So was 96 there? Yeah. Bro, he was, bro, I remember the day. We went to get some McDonald's because my girl was hungry. And we was like, all right, hey, 96, bro, you got to come over here. Because, you know, back his name is his name is for real. I don't want to put his legal name in, but we call him 96. We've always been calling him 96. That's my dog for real. Right? So well, I was like, hey, 96, bro, we're going to go to McDonald's real quick. He was like, I bet. Because he, he just dropped off his girl at a, a hair appointment. And he, she wasn't going to be out for like four hours. So okay. he was like, man, I'm, I, I, can't, I ain't got nothing to do the whole day. How about I just chill with you? I was like, I bet. Right, and so we got into the, you know, what I'm saying the Cadillac. You know, what I'm saying we blasted Key Sweat. Yo, hey, let me tell you, what sweat, I'm not about to do is let you keep chatting in my motherfucking ear about some what whole bunch mean? of bullshit. Yo, C Town. At this point, I think I'm gonna be honest. I'm concerned for you, friend. What you mean? Why do you think you Bobby Brown? You're not Bobby, and you're not a good streamer. <laughs> so yeah, what? What? You motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. How did that feel, huh? How did that feel? <laughs> uh, 
Why don't you ever disrespect? Hey, hey, what I want you to say, don't you ever disrespect the freaky man, all right? See, I didn't want to go to you because I, I fuck with you, man. I wanted you to be on my album with me, man. Because I, you know what I'm saying? I let my friends eat. And this is how you be, this is how you be with me, bro. This is how you be with me. How, like, I feel, I feel hurt. I feel disrespected, dog, because I wanted you to eat with me. You know what I'm saying? Don't be hating. Be freaky. Be freaky with me. Come on, man. It's good. Wins the game at the buzzer. Come on, man. What's going on? Come on, man. I, I fuck with you. Hey, look. I, hey, look, look. I, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? I, I acted out of character. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what. Bro, you jingling for me, nigga. I didn't get my head. Man, oh, you and me, man. My nigga got me, bro. I couldn't do nothing but laugh. Hey, see, Tom. Hey, see, Tom. Get the fuck Yo. out of my face, bro. <laughs> hey, Chad. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That might be the best that nigga really got me, bro. Oh, that nigga got my ass, bro. Oh, fuck. Oh my god. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> hey, I ain't know what to say. <laughs>